I'm flying today with my son Calvin in the CH-750 Cruiser, powered by the 118 horsepower UL-350i engine. Calvin has his laptop computer with him, plugged into the ECU to monitor the engine with a piece of software called UL-READ. Since installing the UL-350i engine, the ECU light has turned on intermittently for short periods of time and we're trying to determine the reason. The ECU light turns on when one of the four engine sensors is not reporting to the ECU, and we're trying to figure out which sensor it is by running the software. Mexico traffic, uh, experimental Zenith will be departing runway 24, local flight, Mexico. Full power, nose up. Yeah, for some reason fuel and oil pressure are registering on this, but everything else is. There's slight discrepancies, but uh, they're consistent. Uh, but we don't need that, we've got that on our panel. Well, the fuel, well you, should, you have most of this on your panel. Right, right, so RPM and the RPM 2425. Yeah, it's, it's jittery, but it matches. Right, it seems to be accurate, but it's right, it's taking a lot more readers quicker. And then, uh, Model position and gives us an exact percentage. That's kind of nice to have. It's it's kind of interesting to know at least what your range for your maximum and your minimum on your manual throttle is because it's actually a pretty small range. Right, right, right. And then, uh, yeah, that's kind of neat. And so you're plugging that in from here. And that's cool. There's a plug on the on the coming off the ECU, and then we we got the cable from UL on the back uh, of the ECU. And yep, and that's a, for, for a special cable from. Uh, no, no, it's just RS-232 uh, to USB, it's oh. nothing special. It's just a serial okay. port. I'm going to turn and here. You got their proprietary software. Right, right. you got to clean your laptop screen a little bit. Back. It's dusty. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So our ECU light, as we can see, is not coming on at all and that's the purpose of what we're doing this here because uh, when the ECU light comes on, where would it show that now? No, it, the error would pop up here. I see, it. yeah, sensor error, I see. Yep. Right. And yeah, we did confirm that before uh, looking at uh, just pulling uh, an airflow sensor off the right. end. Right, and, and, and it, see, did. it, it did. immediately popped up and told us exactly what it was, so. Because that's, from what, from what we've been told, that if the ECU light comes on, it means one of the four sensors is not reporting correctly. And at that point, I believe the engine goes on in full rich mode and so forth. It becomes, uh... Yeah, Roger, Roger was commenting on that, saying that the plugs look like they'd be running super rich, very sooty. Alright, and that's... And that'll happen when the ECU light comes on, I believe, and, because then it goes full rich. Play around with the throttle settings a little bit. I'm going to throttle back for a little bit. Yeah, we really have no idea exactly what the uh, what creates the situation for this to occur. Yeah, whether it's random or there are certain um, or another. I, presumably, there are other factors. We just have no idea what they are. Yeah, they're saying it was mostly happening a couple minutes after takeoff. Right, right. We're here in the CH-750 Cruiser model, and we have the UL-350i engine installed, which is the, uh, that's a smaller of the, of the two 350i, IS, uh, variants on the engine. And the light just flicked on, I think, unless it was just, the. Uh, yeah, it did that twice earlier with Roger, um, just flickered on for a fraction of a second, and but nothing pops up here. Yeah, so. it may not even have been, it might have been just a lighting on it. Get a shadow on it. Yeah, it definitely, like, yeah, right. I wouldn't be surprised if it actually did flicker on, because right. I didn't see that earlier for sure. But that's that doesn't give me anything to work with, so. All right. 
You're saying he was coming on for actual minutes at a time, so. Yeah, oh yeah, no, no, I was definitely on. I was always, every time I would take a picture with my phone to be able to show Roger and to look at everything else, but there wasn't anything special, it seemed, in terms of anything on the temperatures, oil, anything else like that that triggered it at all. Maybe we'll try a few turns, maybe it's so Roger was saying the only difference between uh, this engine and the 130 was uh, the piston heads. All right. Well, it basically runs the same engine running at different uh, different compression ratios. Okay. And to do that, they do have to change the piston heads on someone, and I'm not sure the specifics on that. But and uh, on this on this airplane, the cruiser, it seems we still get more than adequate performance with it. The big advantage with the lower compression is. Uh, the fuel type, you can use lower octane. It's still high octane gas, but it's not the super high octane. It's not the uh, 93, it's 91 octane. Okay. And that's more readily available. It's just not the high performance version of the same engine. Yeah. Well, Roger was also saying that at your normal cruise RPMs, the, the power curve is very close. And it was really thing. only a 3300 where you really noticed that uh, that 12 horsepower difference. That's exactly it. And so, from an efficiency standpoint, I just think the smaller, smaller, and I mean that smaller in the lower rating engine seems to be better suited, I would guess. And uh, you know, on the stall version where you have, you want maximum power for takeoff and climb, if you're operating in really tight areas, then you might want to go for the larger power. But on the, on the cruiser airplane, it seems to really have plenty of power, so... Got a nice interview uh, weather today. Nearly unlimited visibility. Flying around with different power settings, see... And, uh, yeah, Roger didn't do that much. He was just kind of sitting at 2600. Right. But yeah, and I don't know that there's any any right or wrong way of knowing. <laughs> yeah. You know, if it's well, uh, if we didn't get is, anything earlier, so if everything is working well, it shouldn't matter what power settings and what you're doing with it from that standpoint. Yep. And of course, you know, Murphy's Law being what it is, the next time we go flying without the recording equipment, we'll probably have. Uh, have, have a light come on for a minute or two again. But it's nice that this software is available for cases like that. Yeah, now it really shouldn't be all that difficult for the ECU to automatically log. Um, and uh, have those, or whatever, whether it's just logging the last run or whatever, but having, having diagnostic files available regardless would be nice, but uh, yeah, at, at a minimum having this is nice. Yeah, I agree. But it's true, though, you're right, that having that automatically logged all that information, you would think that that wouldn't be a big issue anymore to, to obtain, but... That train's going by. See up there, there's a train that's holding. They're waiting, they're passing. You see how they go double tracks right there? Yep. Mexico traffic, uh, experimental zenith is mid left downwind for runway 24, Mexico. So they're headed the other way, presumably? Yep. Okay, slowing it down. A flap down as well. And Mexico traffic, experimental is turning a left base for runway 24, Mexico.
Yeah, Mexico traffic, experimental is turning base to final runway 24, full stop, Mexico. Nice, cool, dense air on, the, on these winter days like that. Yeah, it's uh, 3,000 feet or so earlier. It was uh, super smooth. Yeah, I know. Well, even where we were there. Yeah, that wasn't bad at all. Well, as soon as we get down here, it gets... <laughs> yeah, it's it's warming up. So. It's bumpy. I don't know what it is. It doesn't really feel like thermals, but I guess it probably is. It's all relative, I suppose. It's increased... Well, the temperature's increased like 10 degrees in the last hour or so. Yeah, see how slow we can get this down? Look at that. 30 miles an hour indicated here. Alright, well, I guess it was a successful flight, except that our VCU light that we're trying to test for. <laughs> yeah, that's another 20 minutes without it going on, so. It did not go on, so. We're up to one hour now. And it'd be funny because, uh, again, next time we go without the recording equipment, uh, probably get it. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs>